Welcome to a lesson on polar form of complex numbers. Uh, in this uh, video, we will uh, look at how we can plot complex numbers using a rectangular coordinate system. Uh, we'll look at how we can convert those complex numbers into polar form. We'll look at how we can multiply and divide complex numbers that are in polar form. And then we'll look at how we can uh, compute powers of complex numbers that are in polar form. So the first thing we need to look at is just how do we uh, graph complex numbers. Uh, again, it's very similar to how we uh, have normally been plotting numbers on an XY grid. Uh, so again, X and Y represent your horizontal and vertical distances. Uh, so when we have a complex number, if you remember, usually a complex number is written as Z equals A plus B I. Uh, the A, we usually think of that as the real part, the real number. And B, we think of as the imaginary part. Uh, now, technically, both A and B are going to be numbers, real numbers that we're used to. Um, but this B is considered to be the imaginary because it's involved with the I here. So if we wanted to plot the point on the complex number plane, uh, we're going to think of the A as the X value. So that's the horizontal dimension. And we're going to think as B, uh, which is the imaginary part, as sort of the Y axis. Okay, so let's look at a few examples here. Uh, so first one we have is z equals 2 plus 3i. So that means we're going to go two units horizontally, so to the right, and then three units up. So if we go two units over and then three units up, that would be where we will find 2 plus 3i. Uh, second one is we have 4 minus i. So that means we're going to go four units in the, in the horizontal direction and then one unit down vertically. So we're going to go over 4 and down 1. So that's 4 minus i right there. Uh, the third one is negative 3. So you, if you, there's no i component, so you could think of this as a negative 3 plus 0i, uh, which means you're just going to go 3 units to the left. Okay, So negative 3 would be on the, the real number axis. And then 2i has a 0 real part. So this is like 0 plus 2i. Uh, so it's 0 in the real direction and 2 units in the imaginary direction. So we're going to go 2 units up uh, the imaginary axis. So there's where 2i would be located. Uh, before looking at converting things to polar coordinate, we need to talk about the modulus or the absolute value of a complex number. Uh, and this should look very similar. Uh, absolute value or modulus of a complex number uh, basically comes from the hypotenuse or, or the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, so the modulus of a complex number z uh, is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. Uh, so let's look at an example. Let's find the modulus of z equals 2 plus 3i. Uh, so the modulus is going to be the square root of of 2 squared plus 3 squared, which turns out to be the square root of 13. All right, so how do we express uh, complex numbers in polar form? So again, we've already looked at complex numbers uh, in terms of a rectangular coordinate system, right? So we know the horizontal axis is the real number line and the vertical axis is the imaginary number line. And just like we did with converting rectangular coordinates to polar, we're going to have to figure out how do we convert these rectangular values into an R and a theta. Um, typically, when we see a polar form, uh, so again, we're used to Z equals A plus BI. That's what, how we normally represent a complex number. Uh, and what we saw earlier when we converted to polar was that the X, which in this case is A, was the same thing as R cosine of theta. And the y coordinate, or in this case b, is our sine of theta. And so this would be sort of a direct substitution. Um, if we look at this equation, the second equation here, um, they both terms have an r in it. And so we can factor that r out. And this third equation is the one that we're going to probably use most frequently. Uh, r times the quantity of cosine theta plus i sine theta. Okay, so that's usually what we're going to think of when we think of a complex number in polar form, r cosine of theta plus i sine theta. Uh, and just for mention here, sometimes you may see this abbreviated as r cis theta. Uh, 
The CIS is just shorthand for cosine theta plus I sine theta. Uh, so that's, if we knew the A and the B, that's how we could uh, figure out or how we could express it as a polar form. Uh, but to do that, we need to know R and theta. So this is kind of what we looked at doing um, back with just polar coordinate systems. So how do we convert it? So to find R, R is just going to be the modulus of your complex number. And we're going to use tangent of theta to find your angle theta. All right, let's look at a couple examples here. So we want to convert... Uh, these two complex numbers in the polar form. Uh, the first one is z is equal to 3 plus 3i. So again, the first thing we need to do is figure out our modulus. Uh, so r will be equal to the square root of 3 plus 3 squared plus 3 squared, uh, which is going to be the um, 3 square root of 2. Um, we don't have to worry about plus or minus like we did with polar coordinates earlier. We just leave it as a positive 3 root 2. Uh, and then we take our tangent uh, to find theta. We do the tangent of theta is equal to the imaginary over the real. So 3 over 3, which is a 1. And we know tangent is positive in the first and the third quadrants. And so tangent will equal 1 when theta is equal to pi over 4 or 5 pi over 4. So how do we know which of those two we want to use? Well, look at where the original point is actually located. This is why we had a graph. So 3 plus 3i would be in the first quadrant. So if that's in the first quadrant, then which of these two angles is in the first quadrant? Well, that would be the pi over 4. So we're going to use the pi over 4 angle. Um, so we can take our r value, 3 root 2, and put it in the front. And then we're going to have cosine plus I sine of pi over 4. So our uh, polar form of our complex number would be Z equals 3 root 2 times the quantity of cosine of pi over 4 plus I sine of pi over 4. All right, our, our second one is Z equals square root of 3 minus I. Now we're going to follow the same process We're going to find R. We're going to do the the modulus of our complex number, so that's the square root of a square root of 3 squared plus a negative 1 squared, and if we work through that, that turns out to just be a modulus of 2. Uh, to find our angle, we're going to use tangent of theta, again equals the imaginary over the real, so negative 1 over root 3, um, and tangent is negative in the second and the fourth quadrants, and it's going to be a 1 over root 3 at either 5 pi over 6 or 11 pi over 6. So again, how do we know which of these two we pick? So let's plot the original point. So 3, or square root of 3 minus i is going to be 3, square root of 3 units to the right, and then 1 unit down, so it's in the fourth quadrant. And the 11 pi over 6 angle is in the fourth quadrant, so we're going to use the 11 pi over 6 angle. So we can rewrite the square root of 3 minus i in polar form as 2 times the quantity of cosine of 11 pi over 6 plus i sine of an 11 pi over 6. All right, so let's look at some of the a couple operations that we can do. So if we have two complex numbers that are already in polar form, uh, how do we multiply and divide them? Okay. Uh, if you remember back to um, pre-calc algebra, if you wanted to multiply complex numbers, you would just uh, foil them out. So it wasn't too bad. Uh, division, you actually had to multiply by a conjugate. Um, I'm not going to go through that here. You can find that elsewhere. But So if we want to multiply our two complex numbers, so z1 times z2, uh, we can multiply their r values, so r1 times r2, and then we can add their angles, so theta 1 plus theta 2, and that works for both the cosine and the sine. Okay. Uh, division uh, works very similar, so if we're dividing two complex numbers, we're going to divide their r values, uh, and then we are going to subtract 
uh, the angles. And you're always going to put, so if it's Z1 over Z2, you want to do R1 over R2 and theta1 minus theta2. So make sure you get the order of your subtraction and your division here correct. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at um, a couple examples here. Um, so I'm going to use the same complex numbers I used in the first example, 3 plus 3i and square root of 3 minus i, because I already know what they are in complex form. So if we want to do, uh, if we want to multiply our complex numbers, so z1 times z2. So again, the idea was here, we're going to multiply their individual uh, r values. So I'm going to take the 3 root 2 from the first one times the 2 of the second one. Uh, and then I'm going to add do cosine of the sum of their angles. So we're going to have the cosine of pi over 4. And that came pi over 4 from the first angle and 11 pi over 6 from the second. So pi over 4 plus, plus 11 pi over 6 plus I sine of the same thing, 11 pi, or pi over 4 plus 11 pi over 6. Uh, and to finish this out, we just need to simplify things. Uh, we know 3 root 2 times a 2 is just going to be a 6 root 2. So that's our new radius. And then to combine our angles, we have to do you know, common denominator. So pi over 4 plus 11 pi over 6 has a common denominator of 12. And so we end up getting 25 pi over 12. Uh, and that would technically be a correct angle to use. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, express it as an angle between 0 and 2 pi. Uh, so if we found the coterminal angle, if you remember doing that, way back at the beginning of the semester, we can subtract off 2 pi, uh, and that gives us an angle of pi over 12. So pi over 12 and 25 pi over 12 are coterminal with each other. So we could express the result of multiplying our two complex numbers as 6 root 2 times the cosine of pi over 12 plus i sine of pi over 12. All right, let's look at a division. Let's take the first complex number and divide it by the second, so z1 over z2. Uh, so if we looked back at the our formula, we're going to divide, just like we multiplied the r values here, we're going to divide them. And we want the first one on top. So we're going to put a 3 root 2 on the top and, a two, and the 2 on the bottom. And then it's going to be cosine. Now we're going to subtract the angles instead of adding them. So I'm doing the first one minus the second one because it's the first one divided by the second. So we're going to have pi over 4 minus 11 pi over 6 plus I sine of pi over 4 minus 11 pi over 6. Um, if we do that subtraction real quick, pi over 4 minus 11 pi over 6 will result in a negative 19 pi over 12, um, which again, that would be a perfectly acceptable angle. Uh, I just want to convert it to something that's between 0 and 2 pi. Uh, so if we add 2 pi to that, we're going to get a 5 pi over 12. So we could express the result of this division as 3 root 2 over 2 times the quantity of the cosine of 5 pi over 12 plus i sine of 5 pi over 12. All right, and then one more here. So if we switch the division, if we did z2 over z1, uh, then we're going to have, we're going to flip our, our fraction. We're going to have two over three root two, uh, and then, which now simplify to root two over three. And then we're going to have the cosine of 11 pi over six minus pi over four plus I sine of 11 pi over six minus pi over four. Uh, and if we sit, simplify the 11 pi over six minus pi over four, we're going to get 19 pi over 12. So we have root 2 over 3 times the quantity of cosine of 19 pi over 12 plus i sine of 19 pi over 12. Uh, just one last uh, theorem here we have is De Moivre's theorem. And this just shows us how we can do powers of complex numbers. So if you have z to the nth power, then you get r to the nth power times the cosine of n theta. So we're multiplying n and theta times i sine of n theta. Uh, so let's just look at one example here. Uh, I'll do um, z, our first complex number to the third power. So we're going to have 3 root 2 to the third power, which turns out to be 54 root 2, and then cosine of 3 pi over 4 plus i sine of 3 pi over 4. 